Um, our final, final presenter uh, today, very excited to introduce her. Um, when we talk about, you know, sort of trailblazers and um, impacting culture around food, I don't think that anybody would argue that uh, Whole Foods um, hasn't been an incredible force on us in so many amazing ways. And now there is, a, and I think Nona will help explain how that is, but there's a, a foundation, Whole Kids Foundation, doing some incredible work already. Um, and uh, Nona comes as the executive director, president and executive director of Whole Kids Foundation. And prior to that, for two years, she was a senior global marketing coordinator for, for Whole Foods Market, where she worked with the schools to improve their food service. Um, and so therefore, now she's able to take all that energy and knowledge and direct it into building this organization. Um, welcome, Nona Evans. Thanks so much, Lisa, and thanks to you guys for hanging in here. I think it is clear that we will have a healthy future based on the fact that you guys are all still here at 2.30 on a Friday afternoon and still engaged. So thanks. You guys are truly the superstars. Yes, we had you know Free Radical Man and, and Anti-Accident Superhero, but you guys are one, the, the folks that are really the believers and that make everything possible. So Lisa, to you and for bringing everybody together. Um, this is just an amazing opportunity. Um, did we decide if the clicker was not going to work? Okay, well, I'll give it a try. But, you know, I I'm the last speaker on a Friday, which is always fun. I thought, how can I, you know, really make sure that you guys are ready for this? So we're going to have a pop quiz. Because um, it's Friday, right? That's what we do. So I need you guys to show me your hands if any of your kids, either the ones that you have personally or the ones that you work with every single day, have ever shown you something you didn't know on a piece of technology? Good, awesome, that's what I suspected. I know I had to ask my son how to play a DVD the other day. That is the same thing that Whole Kids Foundation believes is possible about real food. We think that in just a few short years, kids can be telling the adults about real food and empowering everybody to have a healthier future. We really do um, know that it's hard work to connect what you eat with the health of your body. So that's now my job and I work for you. So uh, I work with the Whole Kids Foundation, as Lisa said, and what we are doing is working to improve children's nutrition by supporting schools and inspiring families. So we'll see, is this gonna work? Maybe not. All right, this is mostly for me, but, and I'm not gonna read to you guys. So when you, when you get stuck, and we, we've ta heard and talked a lot today about things are hard and we have to believe and we can't give up, and that is all so true, because look, look where we are. You know, things have changed a lot in, in just, you know, a few short decades. They can change a lot in the other direction as well. And I don't need to share with you guys scary statistics, but there's a few on the next slide. Um, and you know most of them, but look at that middle one. That's a new statistic. Our kids, our kids are having strokes. That's the reason that you guys are all still here and why we're here working together on a Friday afternoon. So what do we do about that? Um, let's see if we can, there we go. So that's who we are. We'll go to the next one because I told you what we do. This is also what makes all of our jobs so hard is most of what we have to do, like Meg did, is have the courage to make really common sense decisions. We live in a culture where those are really counterintuitive because so many decades, you know, 30, three decades now, 30 years, lots of people have been working to teach us that processed foods are magic. They make our lives easier, they're more affordable, and guess what, they do but we pay for it at the end of our lives. And I don't know about you, but I don't wanna do that. I'd rather pay a little bit now and have health and, and vitality for lots of years to come. So Whole Kids is engaged in a number of those very, very common sense solutions that are getting uncommon results. And so here's, here's the three things that we're currently in action on. And what Whole Kids is, is a set of resources for you guys. So I'll give you our website at the end. You don't have to take notes, it's late on a Friday. 
We are supporting schools that want to implement salad bars. Yay to San Antonio. San Antonio has put in over 100 salad bars in the past year and a half. Meg's got 20 of them. It's hard. I know it's hard. I've heard every reason that it's hard, I promise. I also know it's really scary. The idea of having to go from a heat and serve environment to one where people are actually using knives in a school where there are children is very, very scary. Um, I can tell you that we funded over a thousand salad bars in the United States. There are over a thousand salad bars in schools today that weren't there a year ago, and they do work. What we know is that the CDC is going to publish a study this fall that shows that of kids who eat school lunch, those that have a salad bar consume three times more fruits and vegetables. And that was a consumption study, not a self-reported serving study. So that it dealt with the put it in the garbage can versus actually eat it. And it's not that what our school food programs are doing today is not great because you guys are doing great things. It's, it's about choice. I mean, you guys nailed it with that switch in the a la carte. You still gave kids a choice, and their choices were all healthy options. That same thing happens when you have a salad bar. Everybody's heard the old adage that you have to present a kid with a, a new choice anywhere between 10 and 20 times. Well, you guys have our kids 175 days a year. You make that really easy. And positive peer pressure kicks in. That's the thing that I'm always amazed about is it just takes a few kids that go through the salad bar and pick up something that the kid behind them has never seen. And they're like, wow, what was that? I think I'll try that. So we do salad bars. If you want a salad bar, we are continually funding salad bars. Saladbarstoschools.org. It's a number two. Um, and you can find all this on our website, so you don't even have to write it down. But even better, not only do you get the salad bar, the cutting boards, the pans, the chill pads, all the equipment that you need, even if you're at Heat and Serve, you can, can move to salad bar. Thelunchbox.org, which is also on our website, but you might want to write that one down. Thelunchbox.org is a website that we've worked to develop and fund that is replete with tools. Everything from recipes, which is the number one most used thing, they are nutritionally analyzed and they're scalable for your school size. So you can plug in how many servings, what grade level or what nutrition level you need, and it will scale everything for you. We have about 150 school districts right now using the lunchbox for the recipes section. But in addition to that, there's tons and tons of training, food safety training, knife skills training, uh, planogram training, financial training, just about everything you'd need to implement any sort of healthy change in your school lunch program, but particularly salad bars. So I wanted to let you guys know that's a resource. If you're inclined, certainly there are lots of ways to be successful that don't include a salad bar, but we think they're a really neat way that set kids up to make choices for life. Um, school gardens, I need not say another single word about why they're important. We have money. I learned that from Lisa. <laughs> right now, um, you can go to the Whole Kids Foundation, wholekidsfoundation.org website, and we have a $2,000 grant application that's open through December 31st um, if you want to either implement or expand a school garden. So for all the great reasons it, that, you know, kids sometimes still think food comes out of a box, and it doesn't. It starts in the ground, and a school garden is a great way. So if you want a garden, if you know somebody that wants a garden, if you think gardens are neat, pass that word along. So we would love to give away the $2.268 million that we have to fund school gardens in this country and in Canada. Um, the thing that I shouldn't mention to you, but I am because I'm so excited about it, is a pilot project that we have going on. And it is um, teacher nutrition, and I'm going to steal some language because it's really a cooking class for teachers. But it's a basic uh, nutrition class with cooking techniques that are based on convenience and affordability. Because I don't know about you, I don't have time to cook dinner every night. I know our teachers don't. So we're teaching uh, educators. So classroom teachers, school faculty, and most importantly, food service staffs, if you're interested, what it means to make healthy choices for their personal well-being. So we are not experts in teaching teachers what to teach in a classroom. There's lots of other people that are way better at that than us. We are really good at teaching people how to eat for optimal health. That's one of the things we get from our genetic relationship to Whole Foods Market. We know that schools, like Whole Foods, 
are now more and more self-insured, which means every time health care costs go up, where do they go? School lunch programs, because it's a great revenue producer. It's the only one in a public school system. And they're doing crazy things, like saddling our school lunch programs with health care costs, or rent and utilities and all the things that nobody else has to pay. So we're convinced if we can help our teachers be healthier, yeah, they're better for our kids, right? They're also going to be better role models. We had some great lunch discussion today about how important it is for kids to see their teachers eating really great food. Some of our teachers pour their hearts into their lesson plans in the classroom every day, and then when they go out and bring the big gulp back and put it on their desk, that's a lesson too. They just they miss the connection. I got the M&M math sheet out of my son's backpack yesterday. I'm like, why are we graphing M&Ms? We could be graphing seeds. <laughs> so again, we empower our teachers with a little bit more knowledge. They're not only healthier themselves, they're better role models. They're better advocates for those wellness policies that we talked about earlier. Because I don't know about you, but I've never tried to be a teacher and tell a, uh, an enthusiastic parent that they can't bring sugary cupcakes to their kid's birthday. We put our teachers in that position, so we need to arm them with the, the understanding and the ability and the desire to explain to an advocate or a parent that, you know what, there are other ways that we can help your child celebrate their really special day. So more will be available about that. There's not very much about that on our website right now, but um, we are very excited about continuing that pilot. We're teaching classes for AISD right now, and um, if it's something you're interested in, this is my big request for the day. I need your feedback. We are here to support schools, so I need to know what support you need. If any of these are things you're interested in or those other things, um, feel free to drop me an email, nona.evans at wholefoods.com, or anything you poke on the Whole Kids Foundation website comes to me. Um, it is really important, and we're always shaping where we're going to go next. We had a great breakfast discussion at lunch. We want to help schools. Uh, deliver more breakfasts to kids. We know how important that meal is. I don't yet know what the right way to do is. Maybe it's an open-ended grant that we let schools apply for whatever system it is that's going to work for them. I'd love your thoughts or your feedback about that or any other place that you could use some help. So you can skip through those others. We, uh, we covered most of those. Let's see if there was anything else interesting in here. Uh, this is actually a school in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, that we were at, they actually were, um, we were putting in 33 salad bars at their school, but they ha happen to already have a garden um, at this school. And you would not believe the pride. The kids came out and they actually took us by the hand to show us their strawberry patch and this fabulous squash that they were growing. I mean, it, it works. It's so fabulous. All right, let's see what else is in here. So this is why we're teaching teachers. We talked about that. Um, and here's why. I mean, you guys know all of this. It, it really does make a huge impact. If we can teach our kids to eat well now, imagine what they're not going to have to do with their kids. But more importantly, think about all the things that are making our economy difficult right now and all of the money that they won't have to spend on treating disease. Think about the quality of life that they'll get to have and that they'll instill in their kids. It's just the right thing to do. So I know it's hard. I know it's tiring. I know we get an endless amount of grief. I know there are all sorts of obstacles. But also know that there are folks out there, and I'm just one of them, that are deeply, deeply passionate about supporting you guys in being persistent and continuing to believe because you guys really are the ones that are going to make the difference. You inspire everyone. You inspire our future. So that's what Whole Kids is all about. I know you guys are probably ready to get on with the rest of your day. I think um, the last slide has our website address on it. That's really the only thing you need to write down because all this stuff we talked about is pretty much there. And um, just know that um, on behalf of Whole Kids Foundation, on, on behalf of everybody that works in food, uh, we know how hard you guys work, and we appreciate it so, so much. Thank you so much, Nona. Um, it was exciting definitely to learn. I didn't know you were doing the teachers as well, and that's so wonderful, because even through the Fuel Up to Play 60 grants, um, we see some schools trying to figure out ways to involve the staff and the teachers, so connections definitely. Um, and on that note, connections, questions, resources, comments, whatever you need, um, as soon as we break, please go to our speakers, those who just presented today, and um, 
not not here, Michelle, out there. Okay, out they'll be outside at their tables. 